Hey everybody, John here, and welcome to my series, How to Use Citrus. This is going to be video 6, and this is going to be the video where we dive into the effects module of Citrus. So open up an instance, instance of Citrus and select here the default dropdown, and then go to the default preset. And then over here on the right in the matrix, drag this first FX knob quite quite high up, if not all the way, because we want to hear what we're, uh, what we're doing. So let's jump into the effects section here. So click here on the far right, and we're going to work our way from the left to the right. So the first knob that we see here is going to be the pan knob, and this is going to allow you to pan the signal before it's processed by these effects. And then next to that, we have the chorus module, and it has a default of a value of four. So if we drag this all the way down, we're just going to hear our sine wave we have in this first operator. And let's drag it back up to four. So we can already hear the chorus effect happening. And this is by default at four. So if you turn on your effects and you kind of wonder why it sounds coursey, it's on by default. So make sure to always check that or change it if you want it or don't want it. So this first slider here is gonna be the chorus depth. And this controls the chorus depth, obviously as, the, uh, as it's labeled. This is gonna be, gonna be the amplitude of pitch oscillation for each of the stacked flangers. So we can kind of tell when it's all the way at the bottom, it seems like it's at a faster rate. Versus at the top where it seems much slower. Next up, we have the chorus speed. So that's basically kind of what that does. It controls the flange speed, the, the speed of the pitch oscillation. And next up, we have a delay. So this adds variable amounts of delay, and it can be applied to each of the stacked flanders. So this is. So with this next knob here, it's a little bit difficult to hear this effect, but let's drag this spread down. And we can hear that delay a little easier. And then next up, this is going to be the chorus spread. So each flanger is assigned a different speed, depth, uh, and a range defined by the basic properties provided for the chorus effect. So as we drag this up, it almost kind of, it almost seems like it smoothens it a little bit because it's all the way down. We can hear that delay, but as we drag this up, it almost seems like it smoothens that out a little, a little bit. So next up, we have the crisscross, and this is actually kind of cool. Let's, let's hold down Alt and then right-click this here. Or it goes down to 25. So, so let's take this to, to zero. So as we increase this, uh, this criss course cross, the left side is going to feed into the right side more, and then on the bottom, the right side is going to feed into the left more. versus at the middle where it stays at the middle. And then this here at the far right is just the volume of the uh, whole chorus effect here with your settings. And then next up, what's kind of cool is this little slider kind of thing here. So if you want to send your chorus effects to a separate mixer track and record that and process that separately, you can do so. Now this might be a little confusing how like if you're dragging up, you're like, okay, that makes sense. I can send it to whatever track number this is, but then it also goes into negative values. So over here on the mixer, I have Citrus on my channel 10. So if I want to send this to channel 11, I would hit 1 because then it's going to go into the next slot over based on where Citrus is located on my mixer. So let's say I want to go send it to 12. I would go number 2 and it sends it there to 12. And then going negative goes the opposite way down if, you, if you're wanting to send your course to a track that's to the left of Citrus. So that's what that does there. And this is going to be the volume that you send that with. And then next up here, we have three different delays. And the other two are the same as the first one. So it doesn't really matter which one at first you select to look at. So the first three buttons you're going to see here are serial. And this button right here will take the output of this delay and feed it into the next delay. And then tempo is going to sync it to your host tempo. And this time knob will now be in basically a tempo lock. And then on turns the delay on. 
So let's turn off our chorus so we can just hear this delay. We have it on, we have it set to serial if we want to send it to the next delay. And we have our delay. And then this first slider is going to be our feedback. So a lot more delays. And all the way at the top is going to be an endless loop. So stop that there. So use this to taste here. This is your time knob and you can base it off your tempo. If you don't want that, you can just do that here in milliseconds. And then next here is the uh, stereo offset. So let's crank this up all the way up. So all the way up, it'll delay the right side. You can see in the window there. So all the way to the top, it's de it uh, delays it by 500 milliseconds. Bam, that's where it hits the right. And then all the way down is the same effect, but for the left side. So that's kind of a cool little setting there. And then here's just the volume of that delay. And then here's the delay type. So you get your normal, which is a normal stereo delay. And then invert will invert the channels as the delay. And then pong is basically the ping pong, so the back and forth, left and right type of delay. And then two and three, like I said, are the same. So if we had delay one and serial on, and then we go to two and turn that on, then that first delay is going to be fed into that second delay. And let's turn these off for now. And let's turn on the reverb. So we have some reverb here. It almost sounds like a sonar. So the first little thing here, we have this color, so it's going to be kind of like a brighter or a darker type of room. The brighter room is going to reflect a little bit more of the high frequencies, while the warmer one is going to kind of is going to seem like it dampens them a little bit more. And it has also to do with bass response in a room. So imagine more stuff in a room is going to sound a little bit warmer versus like a tiled type of room that's going to sound much brighter. So that's how you can control that type of reverb preset in a way. And then we have the tempo button. And this is basically basically going to correspond with your pre-delay. So depending on what your tempo is of your uh, of your host BPM, this is going to determine what the pre-delay is for that reverb. So pre-delay, if you don't know, so let's turn this tempo off and let's turn this pre-delay up kind of significantly. So there's a certain time of when a note is struck and then when a when the reverb effect is actually audible. So here, for example, this is set to, what is it? A little over 500 milliseconds, so a little over half a second. So the cool thing with this is sometimes you wanna retain some, maybe some transients or some initial intricacies of a sound and you don't want the reverb to wash it away very quickly. So that's how you can kind of dial in that pre-delay to, uh, to taste. So let's turn this back on tempo. And this first one here is going to be a low cut. So a lot of the times it kind of is necessary to cut a little bit of that low end reverb out because it can sound kind of muddy and kind of stack up after a while. Then you also got the high cut, which is the exact opposite. And as always, you can see the values on the top left there. So as you drag this up, you can see this is all the way off. And then as we drag it down, we can kind of see how it starts cutting off that top, or that top end of the, uh, of the frequencies. Pre-delay, we went over this. RS, room size, basically how big of a room are you trying to simulate? So this is kind of a really big room here where this all the way kind of a little bit more down towards the bottom is going to be a little bit of a smaller room. And then next up, we have the diffusion. So all the way at the bottom, you can kind of tell the individual echoes of this reverb. Like our ear kind of now tells us that, yeah, this is a lot of delays, which is actually what reverb is. But the higher you drag this up, the more it smoothens it out to actually sound like a smooth reverb. So play with that to taste as, uh, as you'd like. And then next up, we're gonna have the reverb decay. So at the top left, the decay of that reverb is gonna last two seconds until it fades away. And if we drag this up to like 12 seconds, you can see that reverb tail, even here in this spectrum view right here, it lasts for quite a while, so 12 seconds to be exact. And then over here, we have the reverb dampening.
and it basically just attenuates, kind of dampens the, the higher end frequencies. Because a lot of the times in reverb, the higher frequencies will die out eventually first because they just have more energy. They can't make it back as, as bigger waves can. So I feel like it's a little bit more realistic to kind of drag this down a little bit and take off, kind of dampen a little of those those higher frequencies to kind of make your reverb sound a little bit more realistic. And then here on the far right hand side, you have your volume knob for how much of that reverb you want to send. What's kind of a cool setup to do is to crank this volume quite significant and then this reverb decay very, very tiny, like maybe 0.5 or 0.4, something like that. So it's like a gated reverb essentially. And sometimes you can actually, believe it or not, get away with that with a little bit of bass in there. So if we drop this down uh, two octaves, which I could have done the main tab, but it's fine. So you can only really hear the reverb while I'm playing something, but you don't necessarily hear the whole long decay afterwards. And the reverb's just gone. So in a nutshell, this is basically the effects module. You got those three delays, the reverb, the chorus effects. You can send the chorus to your different channels and record that separately and process that how you want to. So there's a lot of cool options you can play around with this, uh, with the effects section. So I highly recommend just to dive in, start making cool stuff. And sometimes it's a lot easier to start with this default subtractive and then just crank up this effects and just kind of see what, what happens. Add some delays in here, feed that next delay into the next one, change the timing a little bit, make that one ping pong, turn the reverb on, turn it up, make a big room, uh, a lot of volume, the decay, very short. Let's take another operator, let's make it a saw, and let's change this to another octave up. So you can kind of make just really cool stuff like that and then add in a little bit of wave shaper here, bring up that uh, preamp there. Maybe add a little bit of extra unison voices. Detune them a little bit. Add in that second operator here into this filter. You can mess around and make play around with, the, some, with this stuff here. What I think is actually a really cool setting, and this is more so a FL Studio thing in general. If you click this gear here, you click this wrench icon, and you have access to an arpeggiator, which is pretty awesome, I think. Select the down. And you have an easy ARP right there. Select your range if you want to go two octaves. And let's say we want to get this cut off, modulate this with a little bit of an LFO here. Let's remove that. Drag this LFO up here, lock that to tempo. Or we can even change this to that really cool cherry phaser that we talked about in the previous episode. Maybe bring that decay up just a little more. So 
So really you can make a lot of cool patches, just mess around, changing knobs, sliding stuff, making things move. Probably a little too much reverb for, for my taste, maybe drag that down. And that here is just really only using two operators, two saws, uh, one octave, uh, the next octave up, some unison, four unison, some effects, uh, two delays, a reverb, some chorus, and yeah, just kind of modulating that cutoff filter. So hopefully you guys learned something with the effects section. If you have any questions, let me know, and I hope to see you in the next video. And in the next video, we're going to be talking about the articulator section, the harmonic editor after that, and then the envelope editor. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.